Okay, so I was trying to look for a video for how to replace the floater piece on a Mocha Master. Couldn't find any of them, so I figured I'd fiddle around with it and figured I'd make one for anyone else who might have this issue. We had some friends who accidentally placed this guy backwards and all the hot water spilt inside and just melted the floater. So, it, it, all it is, is a little piece. I'll show you guys when I open this, but it's just a little piece that moves up when there's water. And this one, because it's so warped, can't move up, so you kind of have to manually push it in to get it to work. So you can get this replacement piece for 50 bucks, I think. They bought it for us, but in Finland or something like that, and they'll ship it to you. So that's the downside of a Mocha Master, but easily fixable. So first thing, unplug, so you don't electrocute yourself. And then there's a few things to take apart. We have to take apart this water reservoir, this um, stand for the coffee, and then reach under here and take off this lid here. And so it's all like, literally, I'm not prepping as much as I should for this probably, but a, um, obviously Phillips head, Phillips head screwdriver. And then I think like a T20 um, star bit these like little, uh, I think they're called torque spits. Um, and that's, and then some pliers and that's really it, super minimal. Um, so the first thing I would say is to just get this guy. So this guy has two screws that are these T20 Torx bit screws and you need kind of like an extension I put some of these, you get these for free with like so many different things, these little bit holders. Just put some with um, end to end and then you get kind of a wiggle there. So you can kind of bend it and, and get it to catch on the screw. So there's these two openings. I don't know if you can see that, but there's, two of these holes made so that you can access these screws and I'll show them to you once we, once we get this off. And you need to get this off first because these screws actually, so you see these screws right there? These screws actually hold a little plate in there in place. So you need to take them off before you take off the reservoir. So same thing, T20 Torx bit, you can take off these screws. Th these are all hand tightened. These screws have a washer, so make sure you don't lose those washers. Um, and let's see, so, so this guy, we're just gonna take these screws off and place them to the side. I'm just gonna put them always have a little container to put your screws. And at this point, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pu pull it up. So this is actually a, it looks like a glass tube that goes into this part of the reservoir. And this glass tube connects with a little fitting that is attached to the heating element. So all the hot water rises through that glass tube and then, and then goes into here and out of these into your coffee. So you can kind of just pull it up and it should come off of the fitting. You'll feel it, there you go. You'll feel it get, you'll feel it come off. But it's still attached, so this is where, once it's a little loose, you see that? It's a little loose. There's still a rubber hose holding it together. So just with some Phillips, a Phillips, screwdriver. There's four screws that are holding this cover in place. And once you get it off, you can, it just comes off easily. A lot of wiring in there. It's actually a really simple machine, which is why it's so good. And what you wanna do though, is this rubber hose here, if you can see that. This rubber hose is actually, um, 
does something. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it does actually. We'll find out. But it's connected to, it looks like it's connected to the heating element. So what I would, it's very, if it's new, the hose should be pretty flexible. And I'm just gonna use the pliers to kind of push it off. And that's all you need to do there. Once that hose is off, this whole thing can, can come off like that. So if you look inside, this is, this is the fitting right here that the glass, this glass tube fits onto. So careful with, I don't know if it's glass or plastic, but careful with it so it doesn't break. Okay, so all we, we needed to do all of that so that we can get to this guy here. If you want, you can disconnect this. I might just go ahead and do that. Just make sure you take pictures of stuff so that you know where these different ones go. Um, Cause I am not sure, I'm not an electrician, so I'm not sure if there's a certain polarity to these or what, whatever you call it. But they're all just, uh, what do you call them? Just kind of there by pressure. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this one here. This one is gonna go on the contact that is coming off of the side and the one that's inside goes into the deepest contact. And so what, what this is, is you see this floater is connected. There's a little metal rod right here. This metal rod, when the floater, when the water fills up, it pushes the floater up and this rod switches, flips this switch here, which then tells the heating element to begin heating the water. And so what this is actually is the water intake. So the water comes down through here and into the heating element and then back up. So to get what we need to do is this floater is, has a little rubber guy here that you can't just pull it off. Otherwise that would have been super easy. So all this work just to get this little rubber guy off. So we need to take this element, this um, switch off and take the rod out and then we can pull this guy out and replace it. So that's just these two screws. Keeping all your screws nice and tidy. This, these are Phillips. And that's it, that's the heating out, that's the switch, comes off really easy. And then this is the rod. That's all it is, it's just like a little rod that gets pushed back and forth and pivots and, and turns off the switch or turns on the switch. This guy, let's see, I don't think I've gotten this far yet, but it's got a little plastic insert here. There you go. That just keeps the, this rubber piece, this rubber um, connector in place. So this is the old heating element, or floater. And this is the new one. Still compare. Yeah. Is it the same one? Yep. So reverse engineer the whole process and you're done. So that really could be the end of the video. You can stop it here and just, if you're savvy enough, do everything in reverse. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put it all back together and then we'll turn it on and see if this works the way it should. So let's see, to get this guy back in there, you probably, it'd probably be best to use these needle nose pliers. And you can just kind of carefully, don't pull it too hard, but carefully kind of just go around. There you go. Pull it. Put this little guy back in there to hold it in place. Rod goes back in and just kind of sits there. There's really nothing holding it in place other than this guy. So the rod should go through that little hole right there. There's a tiny little hole on this heating element. So that's where it pivots, not heating element, the switch. So you gotta make sure that this rod, when all is said and done, is going to be hitting that switch.
that's Damien Hirado in the background. Who is the boss? So this plate is the one that when you put all of this back together, you can see actually the markings of the screws of this stand here. The screws actually go over it. So which is why you need to take the stand out. You probably could try and figure out, I took it out without taking the stand off, but then putting it back in is hard. So you might as well, you're gonna have to take them off anyway. Might as well do it at the beginning. Make sure that you, the, this rod is in place, kind of ensure that everything looks good and it does. So I'm gonna put this guy back where it should go. And I was trying to figure out what, what these are called. They're just friction contacts. So you just push them back in, nothing special. Okay, that looks good. Then I kind of bend the tube. It should go on the, if you're looking at the back, it should go on the left of the of the machine and then just kind of make sure that it, when you pushing you're pushing everything down that rubber hose is going to go next to the heating element and then what i'm doing here is i'm going to look down through the hole and try and you should be able to see where the fitting is that the glass um this glass tube go where it connects and so make sure you, you eyeball it and once it looks good and push it down and so there it kind of went um before i screw this guy in i'm gonna go ahead and put this guy on and so you just should go in easy you just want to kind of get it over most of that heating element and just gently kind of pull it on slip it on as much as you can, so it's nice. There's a nice seal, and that's that's it for that. So we'll put this guy back on. Always take pictures of everything before you take things apart, just so that you remember. See, like I couldn't remember what direction that went, but I guess it has a notch to where you can only put it on one way. For this guy, I remember having trouble putting it back on. Um, just. You'll see that the screw holes have wiggle room to move so that the plate kind of can move one way or another. And it's because when you put all four, they don't all line up perfectly. So it's easier to just kind of put them all in um, just a little bit. And then screw them all on. So this is where it gets tricky. I don't know if it's just the one I have, but yeah, they don't all fit perfectly. And you don't, you wanna make sure they go in straight so that you don't, it's plastic that it's screwing into. So don't, you don't want to strip the plastic. I bet this is painful to watch. <laughs> that won't get it. All right. Doesn't need to be tight. There's no, it's not really holding any weight. Boom. Now two more screws here. Well, we'll do four more, but two here on for this water reservoir. So these two, you wanna make sure when I did this the first time, they kind of didn't wanna line up the right way. And again, these are screwing into metal um, so you'll feel it, you'll feel that it won't budge if it's not being threaded the right way. So just make sure to go slow and feel for, feel for the screws, make sure they're going in the right way. But that's it, boom, it's, that's done. This guy. And then what we'll do to test it is, 
we'll uh, just put some water and turn it on and see if it heats up without having to touch that floater. And if it does, then success. So we're not even gonna, I'm just gonna put the spout on, but we're not even gonna put coffee in it or anything. Okay, let's try it. Put some water in here, some filtered water. Ah, oh. uh, and it looks like it's already floating the way it should. Mm -hmm. And you can see already some water just went right on through and then back up and is sitting there in that glass tube. So, just gonna let that drain into the sink if we turn it on. Let's see, there you go. And that is it. And that is how you replace your floater if you ever accidentally pour hot water in there. And you see how the floater goes down. And by the time it goes down, the switch turns off. So the little rod is moving back, easing off the switch, turning it off. So it stops sending hot water. And there you go, that's it. So hopefully that helps somebody. Let's see, peace. And then there's this guy, which I didn't take off because I had already taken it off. So it wasn't on the beginning of the video, but this dude literally just goes in by, by pressure. And it has these two little tabs where this guy, just these other tabs fit into. And so you just want to use some pliers, kind of line it up. Should go in nice and easy. And so you might need to use some something to kind of push these guys in a bit. Push the tabs in as you push down. And that's it. It doesn't need to really, doesn't need any um, screws or anything like that. Just push it down, make sure it's nice and firm.